Hi guys, it's me again, Molly Kuhn, and today I'm joined by... I'm Brenda. And we're going to be doing a film review. It's something I want to try and make a monthly... Yeah, monthly thing, because you do a film review blog, don't you? Yes, I do. And the um, reason we want to do the... Why you want me to do a film blog review every month is because it's you say, get... It's, it's saving me thinking of content. <laughs> Which is understandable. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll be putting a link to your film, your blog in the description, so it gets yeah. you views as well. So, so yeah, we there'll win. be more <laughs> reviews that I've written up in the yeah. description, so give them a watch. I do classic films, so pretty much anything from 1975 down. So when the first technical blockbuster came out is where I kind of stop reviewing. Plus, who wants to touch the 80s? The 80s are the... <laughs> they had some good stuff in the 80s. They had Nightmare on Elm Street. That was boring. Oh. <laughs> I Fine. mean, okay, well, the, it, 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 once you figure out what the plot is, and it does have some good scares, but once you know what the plot is... We don't watch it for the plot. <laughs> yeah, I need to watch it to watch people die. Yeah, so I need a horror film. film. I need a horror film with actual good, um, with an actual good plot to get oh, me invested, well. which is why I love um, most of the original uh, monster movies from... Yeah. Like Hammer horror, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Hammer horror, um, the monster films, like uh, my favorite, one of my favorite films is The Creature of the Black Lagoon. Yeah. Anyway, that's not what we were talking about today. No, today no, we're not. discussing The Phantom Toll Booth, which yes. is not a horror film. No, but it's an amazingly good film. <laughs> it is, it's quite old, it's 1970. Yes, it is. Directed and animated by Chuck Jones, who did How the Grinch, the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And what's up, opera? So what's up? Yeah, opera doctor or something like that. He pretty much did most of the original um, Warner Brothers cartoons from for till fifty something. No, from uh, until yeah, around the late fifties, he stopped doing animated cartoons for Warner Brothers and started doing some other stuff. How um, thanks to bad advertisement, it was the only um, the Phantom Toll Booth was the only main film he ever did because there was problems with the studio he was working with which is kind of disappointing because it's a gorgeous it's a film. Good film it's, it's yeah, yeah it's it's, a <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my childhood favorites but um watching it back again it lost some of the magic well that's because a you're older and you're mm. a lot more cynical i am a lot more cynical I have it lost the I have the epitome of cynicism. I mean, for me, it has it hasn't really lost its magic because I haven't did be, I didn't become a cynical cynical adult very easily. I do have some cynical about the world, but I'm able to put that to the side when watching this film because it's a nice remembrance of when I wasn't a cynical adult. Says you who comments on him walking through a construction yard. <laughs> okay. Yes, but that's more along the lines of health and safety, which if you study film, health and safety is something that you're sitting there going, how did the director allow that to happen? How did the assistant director allow that to happen? Are you insane? Because at one point, let's start with the openings. Let's give a quick plot and then we'll go into the opening sequence. Yeah, let's let's yeah. discuss the opening sequence and we can do a quick synopsis. Yeah, the opening sequence is Milo finishing up at school and walking home, which is five minutes, and he walks through an amusement park, a construction site, a harbor where they're lifting a shipping container, one large shipping container, and Milo walks right under it. As you do. As yeah. You do. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a five minute thing, and you're sitting there going, how far away is his home from his school? No, 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 it's America, and America is big, but you know. <laughs> I mean, normally you have school districts. I mean, I went to a school in America which was originally five, six minutes from my house. Which, while I couldn't walk because there was a major street. When you say five, six minutes, well, five, six minute opening sequence. <laughs> yeah, but it was literally just down the street, across the road, and there, there, there was no. There was, I walked, no, there was no amusement park or harbor in between. No, there was uh, a massive street. I mean, I ended up going to a school forty minutes away, but I was driven to that school. I didn't walk <laughs> <laughs> through mountains and streams uh, and. He must have walked about what was it five to ten miles on that journey home. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> It was a long walk, and you're sitting there going, how far away are they? I mean, is he just completely lost because he walks through fields, he walks through all sorts of... To give San Francisco a... 1970s San Francisco. Yeah, yeah just give, well, 60s, because it was filmed in 68, 69, uh, okay. those scenes, and animated it. 
because it would have taken a while to animate. So it came out in the 70s, would have been probably worked on for a while in the 60s. But you have to think going, what the? Where does he live? <laughs> he lives in San Francisco. I'm pretty sure even in San Francisco, school here, home probably not that far away. Anyway, uh, the plot of the film is Milo gets home, he's talking to his friend on the phone, he's complaining that there is nothing, 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 nothing to do, and... Then big box of his. <laughs> boom. And, boom. Which he goes and opens, and the toll booth, which is a very cranky toll booth. <laughs> it's like, are you going to do anything? <laughs> Pick a destination! It, it is a bit sassy, isn't it, the fan of the toll booth? It's, it's, it's uh, quite sassy. Yeah, <laughs> so the car, he gets a car, he goes through it, and, and he ends up in this magical animated world. Yeah, which uh, he realizes he's kind of a cartoon character because as soon as he goes in, he sees he's a cartoon and then spends four, two, or a minute or two. Another two minutes going in and out of the toll booth. <laughs> and then the toll booth is like, go already, you annoying little brat. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes through and he finds himself dealing with a whole entire adventure of crazy characters. Um, uh, the first character he meets is the Weatherman. And uh, not the normal weatherman. The weatherman is the character to move people on their way. His job is to say whether or not... Whether or not you're on the right path. Or whether it's going to rain or not, which is his main. Yeah, he's not a weatherman that tells you what the weather is. It's like, is it going to rain? Well, whether or not, and then it rains on him. Don't movie... pop up a couple times. The thing is with this movie is you have to take everything literally. Yes. Because most things are puns on words. Yes, and he will pop up occasionally throughout the film going, Have you found your way? Or have you found, have my, you found way? my way? If so, can you return it to me? Yes, <laughs> he, he, he has a little bit more of a... Um, so he's... then they end up in the doldrums because... Well, then Milo ends up in the doldrums. Which are little snot creatures. Yes. Which and, don't like you doing anything. And they have a whole musical number. <laughs> and so they try so they try not to get you to do anything. Even breathing, because it requires effort. So well, why do you buy bother? You know, just to stop breathing. It yeah. requires effort. Don't and bother. And then talk. <laughs> the watchdog. Yes, talk shows up. The watchdog. Woof, 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 woof. Ring, 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 ring. Wake up, wake up. Think of crazy things to get you moving and get the car moving. Uh, like birds that swim and... Fish that fly. Dinosaur ice cream and... Banana man of something or other. I don't know, there were some weird things that Milo, that the dog tried to get Milo to speak up. Things which to our adult brain are incomprehensible. Yeah. <laughs> and the car will, the car heads off, and they end up getting out of the doldrums, and almost, and then Talk has a musical number. Time is a gift, no, give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the music's all the musical numbers are really good. This they, they are. They are. I mean, the opening sequence is a gorgeous song about Milo. Uh, then there's the song in the doldrums, um, which is I think you know that. Um, there's nothing, nothing to, to do, do in, in the, the doldrums. doldrums. Yeah, that's um, the bit I know. Yeah, I, and you got times a gift. Yeah. And um, then we go into then they almost smash right into uh, Doctor Cacophonous. I think that's his name. He's the Doctor of Sound. And tries to... And I, think, I think the caravan says Doctor of Discord. Or something like, <laughs> something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think he, he... He hates all beautiful sounds and then he enjoys noise. Yeah, and the awful dim. Oh, the awful, awful dim. It's like his pet puff of smoke. Which is all Who bad sounds. And he sings a whole entire <laughs> song about you know, noise, noise, wonderful noise. Yeah, it's kind of insane. The whole film is, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> so when their uh, talk steals a big thing of laughter, and they escape from. Just <laughs> just made just made yeah, they get they well, don't escape. They just kind of pass this guy's slowly. This guy's too so, crazy. You know, films <laughs> where people walk in, they see something really awkward, and they slowly back away. That's what they do in this in that scene. They're like. Back away slowly, <laughs> close the door, get in the car, drive around, and run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so then they end up in. Okay, so before I get, they're trying to get to the castle of the uh, of the, the castle in the end. Castle yeah. in the end. So that's their main goal because that's where Milo said I want to go to. Then the basic premise is in this animated world there are two kingdoms, Digitopolis and Digitopolis, Digitopolis, who are arguing over whether words or numbers are better, and Milo has to go and bring peace to these nations by saving the princesses, rhyme and reason, who are in the castle in the We're air. pretty much common sense. Yeah. And every time he says castle in the air, it causes big thunderclaps. And everyone goes, <laughs> you can't say that! <laughs> no, 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 monsters! It's like Lord Voldemort of the 70s. <laughs> pretty much. Um, they have to, and there, the castle in the air is hidden behind the mountains of... Ignorance. Yeah. So they end up at Digi Dictionopolis, where they first meet... It. Oh, we forgot about Cher Short Stuff. Short thing. Who? What? The lovely little sheriff. Oh, sheriff of short stuff. <laughs> who shows up. Who believes everyone is guilty. <laughs> yeah, guilty, 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 and pretty much charges them in all sorts of weird. Uh. Who will come, um, but they end up in Dictionopolis where we pass through the uh, orchard of letters, which you get to see all these gorgeous apple letters that are pretty much picked like apples. Mm -hmm. The green are the. Lower case and red are the capitals. Yep. And so they see all that, and then they get to meet the servants of the king of Dich uh, uh, the king of, king of Dictionopolis. Yeah, the king of Dictionopolis, who is who pretty much use every single word to say one thing. Hi, hello, salutations. Which is yeah, which is basically the problem in Dictionopolis. With rhyme and reason gone, they're just using words willy nilly without really thinking about what they're saying. And their sentences don't make sense. Yeah, their sentences don't make sense, and they're just All rambling. Sense. And yeah. yeah. And then we meet the humbug and the spelling bee. B e e. <laughs> yeah. So they have a nice long little argument between the two. And all in all, their argument, they have a big fight, spelling words, little sword fight with B using his little his stinger and the. Humbug using his cane. Yep. Which ends up getting Milo and Tuck thrown in jail. Because it destroys the word fair. Yes. And in the word fair they meet one of the few sane people. The witch. Yes. And not that type of witch. Like the weatherman, she isn't she is there to to help you decide which words to use. And she gives you a little bit of backstory about what happened to drive those two apart. Pretty much once the original king of knowledge or um died uh he split his kingdom into in the movie four the books no in the movie two and the book four different kingdoms we, we'll get to the book after the film review and give it a little bit of synopsis about that what changed but what happened was uh numbers uh the king of letters and the math magician fought over what was better well whether it was whether numbers are better, whether words are better. And they went to the two princesses, Rhyme and Reason, and well... They basically told them to shut up, they're both <laughs> equally important. They and disagreed and locked him in the castle. <laughs> pretty much. That's, <laughs> yeah. Banished so, onto the castle, so, yeah. Um, then Milo and Tuck get rescued from the um, dungeon and end up at the food... At the... Oh, one, at the King's Banquet. Yes, where we get a number, a song about how letters are better than numbers. You can't have one, one fine, fine day, day without, without the, the day. day, so forth and so on. And all you're saying there is going, yes, but you can't have one fine day without the one. Because <laughs> you can't. Because technically if it was there was no numbers, the day would It'd never be end. a fine day. Yeah. <laughs> so you're using a number right there, and as you can see, there's a little bit of problem with the logic. <laughs> There is none. Just a little problem? It's, yeah, well, there's a big problem, the whole thing. But <laughs> yeah, there is no logic in this world. Like I said, there's no common sense and there's no logic. Pretty much, yeah. Because the, they've been banished to the castle in the air. Yes. <laughs> so eventually, Milo gets the king to agree that if he can get the mathematician to agree as well on anything. And then he will go and get rhyme and reason from the castle. And the king asks if there will be any volunteers to join Milo and talk. Um. The, the humbug joins him, doesn't he? Yes, yeah, the, the humbug, humbug gets um, stung by the uh, by the uh, spelling bee in the butt, and jumps to his feet as soon as the volunteer, as soon as the king calls for volunteers. And I don't think the uh, hum, the um, bumble um, the humbug realizes what's happening because it's pretty much 
standing like, like, because he doesn't scream until they're driving away. Because <laughs> as soon as they leave the castle, the humbug suddenly starts screaming, ow, 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 gives a scream. I'm kind of sure that forces the humbug to volunteer. Yeah. The journey. Yeah, so, um, they leave there, and well, the book would then be a lot bigger journey, pretty much. They leave Dictionopolis and end up outside the... There's kind of no... You kind of go from one to the right outside the the numbers mine. Yeah. Which is where we met the Dull Dodecahedron. Dodecahedron. Which... Oh, twelve faces. Yeah, and he gives them a bunch of math problems to get the mines to open. So, I... Yeah. The Fibonacci sequence. I like the Fibonacci sequence. Yes. You know what the Fibonacci is. I only know what the Fibonacci sequence is because of this film. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? I went to in school. <laughs> I went to a real... Uh, yeah, no. School was a little bit more along the lines of complications with education and I... We don't need to go into my schooling. No. I but learned yes, other I, things. I get some number minds. I learned fractals. <laughs> They get, better. <laughs> better they, get to, they get to number mine. The math magician is there with great big pencil star thing. Okay. <laughs> and they have another number of the same song, the little fiction. Yeah, so you can't have one fine day without the one. <laughs> so pretty much as you can see, yes, and the same no logic applies does, to does that. He does he realise that, that by saying that sentence you can't have one fine day without the one? You're That's actually using words. <laughs> As you can see again, no logic and common sense. No. But yeah, so they get the mathematician. Milo pretty much gets the mathematician to agree by pointing out the fact that they both agree on disagree. Yeah. If they both disagree with each other, and then surely they agree that the other one would disagree, and yeah, so they both yeah. agree on that point. And then they head off. So they get a, okay. So so from there they so, head off to uh, yeah. the mountains of England. And Dictionopolis. The king gave Milo a bag of all the words, ideas, everything that has been ever said, thought, or will be said. And the math magician gives him a tiny pencil. A pencil that can pretty much write any equation and numbers and all that. So pretty much, and don't forget they stole the sound. So oh, well, they stole some sound from Doctor. Yeah. There, there was a bunch of other things that they would have gotten, it, but I always count the book and movie to be two of the same, but two different stories uh, with two different boys named Milo. So, anyway, so they meet up with, uh, doc, uh, the conductor. Chroma. Chroma the conductor. Who conducts the sunsets and sunrises. Which is a gorgeous number. A it is. brilliantly gorgeous, visually beautiful number. With, um, and then he tells Milo to wait to wake him up next day and, well. And the sunrise. And the um, humbug. So it's pretty much just says, well, if you do it now, you don't have to wake him. Okay, so the thing about talk and the humbug, let's give a quick thing. The hum talk is there to keep Milo from getting into trouble. And the humbug is there to get him in trouble. Yeah, so shoulder, talk, if you look at it this way, talk is the angel, humbug is the devil on the shoulders. So once Milo kind of breaks the sky, they run off and get stopped by the guy who gets to pretty much the DMV. Or the, or the, or where, you know where you have to sit and fill in so many forms? Oh, right. We're all about the census taker. Yeah, the census taker. He pretty much, you were literally, the DMV or the census taker, pretty much someone who literally gets you sitting there. Trying to think, what are you talking about, DMV? What? Well, I went with my, I went with a friend of mine, uh... Yeah, but the, the census taker, yeah. yeah. And you literally just take and stand there and give out all your personal yeah, so, yeah. information. What was your shoe size when you was age two? What was your mother's maiden name? And All sorts of stuff, and then they kind of just walk around, they throw him the bag, use the bag of laughter to get around him. To distract him. Yeah. Him. And then they meet into one of your favorite monsters. The, oh, the dreaded tedium. The dreaded yes, tedium. the dreaded tedium. He has no face. <laughs> and he spends the whole entire time flirting with the humbug. Yeah. The dreaded tedium yeah. tries to get the humbug to, and using only a needle, chip a cave through the mountain. And Milo to do something with rice. To move rice. a pile of grain, a pile of sand, one grain at a time, using a pair of tweezers. And something with a little teaspoon, empty a well. Yeah. And uh, talk, and Milo realized, yeah, no, something's not right. And meanwhile, the... <laughs> the humbug is carrying on, just chipping away. And the dreaded tedium is just flirting with him the whole time. <laughs> it's one of 
my favorite bits. I know, you <laughs> loved it the whole time. I'm pretty sure you wanted to swap with the humbug at one point. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need me, I'm pretty sure you did. But from there, they then meet the other monsters in the cat in mouth, didn't they? they, the, they the, the, the little little guy who pretty much is... The overbearing know-it-all. The know-it-all, the, the small little guy who gets them to fall into... To, who fall. Oh, I forgot what his name is. Yeah, he's uh, he talks big. But yeah, I forgot what his name is now. Yeah, the I know. Boastful liar or something. Or something like yeah. that, where he pretty much Milo climbs up the thing and looks at him going. Yeah, they fall down a hole and it's like, you better not stay in that hole because if you come out, I'll tear your bones apart. Or something in the. It's, it's like a tiny. Yeah, and Milo comes up and looks at the guy and then kind of just shakes his head. <laughs> then they get into the. Um, they get grabbed by some big thing who's ignorant or doesn't want it and they use they threaten him with words you yeah, don't barely know at all and you've got the two-faced hypocrite as well and yeah. they pretty much shoot it's a bunch of monsters. words yeah then talk and hump talk ends up losing his frame because when they're running away he falls and, and he dies well gets injured or something and milo makes it to dies the, yeah <laughs> milo makes it to the castle of the air and pretty much ryan reason like thank you for coming we can go now. <laughs> because they could have left anyway. <laughs> they didn't actually well, need no, no. I think they just needed words and reason of um, mathematician <laughs> and the dictionopolis kid yeah. to get along. They, they, were, they weren't actually imprisoned or anything. They were just they couldn't kind come of out just, whenever they liked. Was, <laughs> yes, but they were like, if we leave, we're going to have to deal with... They're going to probably send us right back. Yeah. So it's more along the lines of what was the point. Yeah. And then the Weatherman shows up again and using balloons... Thump off, and they, the castle, everything gets fixed, and there's a um, beautiful number of rhyme and reason. Uh, rhyme. rhyme and reason rain once more. Yep. Um, it's just a happy ending all round, really. And then Milo's then. friend, who he's talking with on the phone, gets the toll booth because you that's what it sounds like. Yeah, because Milo goes back to his home, and he realizes now he, he he's needs only to gone about it. five minutes. <laughs> five minutes for a whole hour and a half film. Yeah, and then he runs off and plays and. We get the opening scene again. The opening musical number again. Yeah. It's a gorgeous film. And we probably haven't done it justice in describing it, but it really is a good film. I do a pretty good write-up about more of the technicals and the story plot and the comparison between the book and the movie in my movie blog, which will go at the bottom. Yeah, so that'll be in the description. Make sure you go read Because there, the, there is a, like I said before, in my mind, it's two different stories, but they cohesion together because... There could be two different Milos in San Francisco, one during the time when the book was actually written, because the book was written about a, a little while before the movie ever came out. So if you look at it, maybe there could be two different Milos about 10 or 20 years apart going through the same, same problems, being that they are cynical little boys who don't see anything. Because seriously, how do you not notice things like that on his walk home? <laughs> Uh, wow. So yeah, uh, the, uh, it gives more about what it was going on with why this Chuck Jones never directed a major uh, the major film other than this. You cover the politics more when you develop a blog, don't you? A little bit, yeah, a little bit more of the politics in there. Um, I cover the book a little bit more, which my only thing is if you're going to watch the film as well, because you should watch the film, also give the book a read because the book gives more characters, changes, um, the movie adds, pretty much gives roles that other characters had to other characters, um, there's more interesting stuff going on, there's more worlds, like the valley, the forest of sight, the valley, of, which has all sorts of fun characters, like the boy who pretty much grows down, and the, uh, the perception, the man who's pretty much perceived whichever way is, I guess, uh, so, um, and the sound is, that uh, you, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Thank you for watching this yeah. longer than usual video. <laughs> well, there was two of us and we were spending most of the time discussing. Yeah. But, um, do go check out the blog. There'll be the link in the description. Yeah, and there'll be before. information on the music. And can they subscribe to your blog? Is there a way of subscribing? Um, not that I'm aware. Um, I think you can get notifications. Uh, but, like, uh, if you've noticed, whenever Richard puts, Richard normally tweets out the latest blog review, and we every time a new blog will come, and um, we can figure out ways to maybe putting it on the bottom. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So I'll put a link in the description anyway. So go check yeah. out that. And there's a bunch of other v v blog posts up already. Yeah. So thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.